Happy Friday, folks. We're going to go over the Detroit Lions' latest news as of this morning. We're going to go through it right now and give you my thoughts. We're going to be talking about an injury to Alex Anzalone that's not football-related. Kind of funny. Predicting the 2024 record. I'm going to react to an article right there. Um, and we're going to get into the Detroit Lions' elite player who potentially could not be starting for training camp. Is there concerns on that or is there no concerns? So that's what we're going to get into. Let's go. Smash that sub button if you want to hear from content creators, not as myself, because it's going to happen here on Lions Nation. I keep telling you in every video because it is happening. Herman Moore is going to be on here quite a bit, at least two times a week, as well as every other content creator that's part of Lions Nation Unite. If you don't like me, good. There is going to be other creators you can at least listen to and give their perspectives on there. That's what it's all about, man. I like It's all about the team. It's all about you guys and getting what you guys desire because let, let's keep it 100. Ain't no one want to listen to me on two two channels 24-7. I don't even want to do that. So let's get into today's in news here. And we have a player that has been injured. Is there concerns that he is going to be readily available for the Lions? And that's Mr. DJ Reader right there. And he's been dealing with injury since last year. And reports come out that he may not be ready for training camp or it's going to be really close. Am I concerned about DJ Reader missing time in training camp? Absolutely not. No, he's a veteran here. He's one of the best at what he does. He's a nose tackle. He His whole job is to stop the run and be a big-time presence in the middle of the field. He's a 10-year veteran. He knows about the game. He knows what he needs to do, and he knows his job. Training camp are, it's more important for younger players or people trying to understand a job. Maybe it's a hard job, right? You're like a Carlton Davis, he goes from corner to, from Tampa to the Lions. Cornerback's a hard position to learn and it, when you're learning a new scheme. But when it comes to DJ Reader, he's a nose tackle. It's not much, it's, it's not that much. He's a veteran. He's the best at what he does. I have zero concern his lack of practice. Even if he didn't practice one time in training camp, I'm really not that concerned about it. He'll, he will be at train camp at some point. We just don't know when, but I'm not concerned. Now, you asked me about week one. That like, if, he, if, he, if he could play week one, that's great. That's all we need him for. Um, rest him up as much as he needs because we need him for a whole season, too. This is not just one game. It's a long season with the playoffs as well. So we, we finally figured out as Lions fans how long it could be because we're not used to it. My concern level is about 1%, 1 out of 100. Not concerned at all. What is your concern level? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Predicting the Detroit Lions running backs that will make the 53-man roster. I have not looked at this list, but I bet you I have an idea. I haven't looked at it. It's going to be David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs. This is my guess for looking at it. Sony Vaki and Craig Reynolds. That's who I got. Let's see who they have. David Montgomery, we already know that. That's not really a prediction. Jameer Gibbs, it's not a prediction. Craig Reynolds, Sony Vaki, exactly what we thought. Look, this position is pretty much locked up, as we know. We know it. If there is one player that's not a lock here, it'd be Craig Reynolds. It's not going to be Vaki because he's going to be played in special teams. It'd be Craig Reynolds versus Donovan Knight. Craig Reynolds is going to win the job, in my opinion. So, I... I agree with this article. I don't even think there's much of a battle. I think when it comes to the running back game, what we're looking is who potentially could be on the practice squad. I think that's really it there. You got Zonovan Knight. He is going to be part of that. Jamar Jefferson. He's going to be part of that. The running back room is locked up, and it's locked up for some time. So let me know in the comment section. Do you disagree with me? Do you think that another running back potentially could make it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This is an interesting article. Alex Anzalone gets injured. His eye is injured. Dun, dun, dun. What does it mean? Did he get punched in the face? Nope. His daughter scratched him in the eye. His daughter scratched him, his little little baby girl. Now, you're going to say, that doesn't happen. Don't mind the scratch swollen eye. It says, my daughter did it. You say, there's no way that that, that happened. It, 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 it's not like, was it, what, what was it like 10 years ago where at tight end, a Hurt himself. He's a dog peed or something. This, I 100% believe. Why is that? Because that's what babies do. 
they scratch at you. They they have their fingernails or not clipped sometimes, and they'll scratch all over you and your eye. If you're a parent, you already know this. Like, this happens. So, uh, look, I'm glad he didn't have se- severe eye damage where it's <laughs> where he can't see. But this is what babies do, and I, it's a 110% believable. And I 100% believe that his daughter did do this because I think we've all been scratched with, with little kids. Um, I had two daughters. It happened to me. Um, my girlfriend's got three kids. It happened to her. I'm sure if you got kids watching this, it happened to you. That's what babies do. And it's it, it's funny that um, his black eye came from a little baby instead of someone else. That's just the way that the world works. It happens to us all. I've got I've even had a black eye from a kid scratching me before when you're holding them all tight and then you just go claw you right there on accident because they're babies. So, uh, you know, get better there. Alex Anzalone, kind of funny. If you ask me, do you believe that Alex Anzalone got clawed by a baby? Why he got a black eye or do you think he had a bar fight? I'm going with baby. Predicting the record for rankings for the NFC North. Have not checked this out. Don't know it. Can't wait to go over it. Now, hopefully it starts from four to, 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 to one. It goes backwards first. And they didn't do that. So they have the Detroit Lions sitting there at 13 and four. Uh, look, if you put the Lions at 13 and four, that's a hell of a good record. I th- Look, I'm really on the fan that the Lions are the best team right now in the NFC. I have them more of 11 or a 12 win football team. The talent is better. They're a better football team than last year, but the schedule is tough, man. And you're just, uh, you're, you're going to have some games that you're going to lose. And it's just the, the way that the world works in the NFL. But they got 13 and 4. I'm not going to argue with that. Um, look, if you put 11, 12, or 13 wins, it's all generally the same within there. I think 13 wins, though, that is the number one seed. If you have, if the Lions have 13 wins, they're the number one seed in the NFL. Because I think that the, the 49ers is going to be like right there, right? 12 wins, 13 wins. So I, I do think if the Lions got 13, not only they win the NFC North, but they're the number one seed in the, NF, in the NFC. They have a home field with, throughout the playoffs. So if they get 13 wins, that's great. That means the Lions have a legit shot making the Super Bowl. And I do have them win the NFC North. That makes sense. Um, who do they got? Number two. The Green Bay Packers at 10 and 7. Yeah, I got Green Bay at number 2 as well. I, a 10-win team, that could be right there, 10-11, very close to the Lions. They're a good football squad. Their, their defense is really good. Their offense is, was picking up at the end of the year. Jordan Love was was playing good at, at quarterback for them. Um, they got good offense in Christian Watkins, uh, uh, Christian Watkins and Romeo Dobbs. They got a good running back, Josh Jacobs, who they picked up in free agency. I have them number two as well. Just a solid team. They're going to be a wild card, in my opinion. Um, eh, but I don't know if we're going to be three wins better than they are. Maybe two or one. It's more more likely. So I think Green Bay's a pretty good team. We split with them, by the way. That's what I have. Um, let's see here. Chicago Bears at eight and nine. You know what? I think eight nine is actually perfect for them, or nine and eight. It's going to be within there, eight or nine wins. I, that's where I have the Chicago Bears. They're going to their defense is really good. Their offense is going to be up and down. Caleb Williams is a rookie quarterback. He's going to have great moments. He's going to have bad moments. He's going to throw interceptions. That's just what happens to a rookie quarterback when he starts. Um, their offense is they got a lot of new pieces in there. Even though it's a good offense, it's going to take a little bit of time to gel. Eight nine wins. Makes sense. And I have that number three as well. Lastly, and least, six and 11. I think this is the perfect mark. Six wins or seven wins. That's what I have the Minnesota Vikings at. Why is that? Because they got a rookie quarterback who I don't even think is going to start. I think it's going to be Sam Darnold, and then eventually he'll get in there. They they got a good offense. Their defense is a little bit sus. You know, they lose... Uh, a really good pass rusher went to the, to the Houston Texans, and their pass rusher went to Minnesota. They still got some good pieces there. I'll, I'd probably go with seven wins for the Minnesota Vikings. Again, they're going to be competitive, but they just, for me, when you're looking at the Minnesota Vikings, their direction is just off. I, I don't really understand what they're trying to do here with the rebuild. Um, you, you could clearly see what the other teams did, right? 
The Green Bay Packers, they developed Jordan Love. They had young talent. You can kind of see what they were doing for their franchise. Chicago Bears, you see exactly what they're doing with their franchise. They built up the defense, and then they drafted players on offense for a rebuild, right? It was a rebuild. And Minnesota, it feels like they're, I don't know what they're doing. It's not a rebuild. I don't think it's a tooling. They're going in weird directions here, and it's a little bit off for me, but I do think that, you know, six, seven wins is about right for them. They'll probably be much better next year with J.J. McCarthy developing. He's going to make mistakes when he is in. I don't think he's going to be in early, maybe halfway or three-fourths of the season, and that'll better him for next year. And then, uh, you know, next year is going to be really tough in the NFC North, really tough. Why do I think next year is going to be extremely tough for the NFC North? The Chicago Bears are going to have year two of Caleb Williams. Their team is going to be better. Make no mistake about it. They'll have mistakes this year. They're going to be better. They're going to be competing for the NFC North. Not this year, but I say next year. Green Bay Packers are going to compete in the NFC North many years. Their team's young, just like the Detroit Lions. They're going to be good for many years. And Minnesota, I think, will pick up. You know, Maybe they'll get to eight wins next year or something like that. But the NFC North is really competitive this year. It's one of the most competitive divisions in football in 2024. In 2025, it could be the best division in all of football. It really could. You could see a situation where three teams go to the playoffs in 2025. I could see a situation like that where the Bears, Packers, and Lions are in the playoffs in 2025. Not this year. I think it'll be Green Bay and Detroit in the playoffs. You could see a situation the following year where it's all three, and that's because the NFC North is good. They're really, you know, they're they're developing and, and, and drafting well. So, regardless of what you think of the Packers, the Bears, they are they have drafted well, in my opinion. We don't know about Caleb Williams yet. I'm not. I'm not going to crown this guy as the greatest quarterback or next Patrick Mahomes, but I'm also not going to say he's the complete piece of garbage. So we're just a wait and see for him. I think he'll be a good quarterback in the NFL. With that said, folks, adios.